If you have high cholesterol, especially high LDL cholesterol, you probably want to do something about it. But wait, maybe you don't have to. Maybe there is another side to LDL you should know first. Hi, I'm Dorothy Adamiak, former board certified naturopathic doctor, author of five books, and a creator of Using Proportions Blueprints, so I can finally get an A in health. I'm sure you've heard from your cardiologist that LDL cholesterol is bad, causes high blood pressure, heart attacks, strokes, and the lower you can get it, the better. Well, we better straighten things out. Let's start with this. Is high LDL cholesterol associated with heart disease? Yes, according to the current medical model, and no, according to some newly emerging studies. For the sake of keeping things simplified, let's work with the conventional yes. High LDL cholesterol is associated with heart disease, but you might have heard that before. Association is not causation. So a far more important question to ask would be this. Is high LDL cholesterol going to shorten your life by giving you a heart attack? For starters, if you have high LDL, rest assured that your body did not make a mistake. If you have high LDL, it means that your body needs it. The body is not confused and it does not make random errors. There is a reason why your numbers are up and no, your liver is not plotting against your heart even if this is what you have read on the internet. Everything the body does, it does it on purpose. Not knowing what that purpose is, is not a good reason to make boogeyman out of LDL cholesterol. The body needs cholesterol, it needs HDL cholesterol as well as LDL cholesterol. But HDL and LDL are not two separate particles. HDL and LDL originate from the same source. They only differ in age and their composition. LDL is younger, fluffier, and has many triglycerides inside. HDL is older, denser, and does not have triglycerides. Over time, LDL simply gets transformed into HDL just like a teenager becomes an adult. In other words, LDL and HDL are the same cholesterol particles, but in a different stage of development. So LDL is not bad on its own. However, it can be implicated in arterial plaque buildup under specific conditions. If you don't know what these conditions are, please see my videos on arterial plaque or even better, subscribe. In the meantime, I'd like to focus on the question. What is the correlation between high LDL cholesterol and an increased risk of dying? Be prepared for surprises. LDL numbers and risk of death do not go up on a straight line, but they follow something called U-curve. U-curve is very different from a straight line. Straight line has only one danger peak. U-curve indicates that there are two danger peaks, not just one. These danger peaks occur when LDL is either high or low, and that has practical consequences. In U-curve, lower does not mean better. So if you want to live longer, the last thing you would like to do is to drive your LDL to the ground. Don't do it, because lower LDL actually is linked to higher mortality. Low LDL number carries a much higher risk of dying from strokes, cancers, and infections. So unless you're okay with those, you should avoid forcing your cholesterol numbers down. Now, notice one more thing about the U-curve. It has two peaks, but it also has a valley. This valley carries the lowest risk of dying. Hence, to live longer, you want to be in the valley. What's the valley? In the general population, the bottom of the valley for LDL cholesterol is somewhere between 116 and 155. The actual sweet spot for the lowest risk of death is at 140. Yep, LDL 140. You might want to remember this number. This is the number for the lowest death rates from all causes. It applies to adults who are not taking cholesterol-lowering medication. In other words, if you are not on the meds, 140 is your statistically sweet spot and anything higher or lower increases your risk. But by how much? 
Actually, not as much as you might think. For example, if LDL number goes up to 230, the risk of death goes up by 20%. If LDL goes up to 310, the risk goes up by 45%. But hear this, if LDL goes down to 40, your mortality risk goes up by a staggering 75%. You know what that means? It means that for many people, lower LDL is worse than higher LDL. And here comes an even bigger twist. Cholesterol lowering medications. They don't just change cholesterol numbers, they actually shift your curve peaks and valleys. Once you're on cholesterol meds, 140 is no longer valid. It's because the meds shift the valley. The sweet spot is no longer at 140, but it is now at 89. Fine, LDL at 89 is the lowest mortality spot for people on meds. But what does this mean? Obviously, the meds make cholesterol go down, but is your risk of dying going down as well? Let's see. If your meds lowered your LDL from 140 to 89, you have not halved your risk of dying. You have just switched from one U-curve valley to another. In other words, lower cholesterol numbers do not necessarily improve your mortality risk. Well, things can get even weirder. If you are on cholesterol meds, any increase of LDL can inflate your risk of dying more than if you wouldn't be on the meds. Let me give you an example. If you are not taking medications and LDL goes up to 230, your risk of dying goes up by about 20%. But if you're on the meds, the risk goes up by 40%. If LDL goes up to 310, the risk goes up by 45% without meds and 70% with meds. And that means that cholesterol-lowering meds make any LDL increase far more dangerous. What's going on? Are doctors not aware? They may or may not be, but regardless of that education or bias, any doctor must adhere to their guidelines. So what are the guidelines? Cholesterol guidelines for doctors are very complicated and they vary depending on the patient's age, gender, disease, medication, and other factors. However, to simplify, a general consensus about LDL cholesterol is that it should stay below 100. If you were paying attention to LDL numbers from before, the guidelines might make you concerned. Why would anyone advocate LDL below 100 when such numbers seem to increase the risk for mortality. What on earth is going on? Well, in a nutshell, LDL guidelines were made for cardiologists, not for people like you and me. And that makes a huge difference because you and me want to live. We don't want to die, period, regardless of the cause. But cardiologists see things differently. Their aim is to reduce cardiovascular deaths, not any deaths but cardiovascular deaths. A cardiologist isn't much interested in your risk of dying of cancer, pneumonia, depression. He focuses on the heart. That's his job. A cardiologist knows that as LDL approaches zero, fatal heart attacks are at the lowest. And he also knows that the risk of dying from a heart attack goes up when LDL increases. Statistically speaking, the risk of fatal heart attacks doubles when LDL is at 110 and quadruples when LDL is at 270. So, in cardiologist's eyes, the lower the better. But this is where the problem is. Even though ultra-low LDL reduces deaths from heart attacks, it increases the risk of dying from other causes, such as cancers, strokes, and infections. Now a question. Are you actually going to be better off with lower LDL? For that, we need to see how many people are actually dying of heart attacks versus other causes. Here are some numbers according to CDC. On the average, there are 2.84 million deaths in the USA every year. Out of those, the biggest chunk goes to the cardiovascular deaths. These make up 23% of all deaths. But Cardiovascular deaths are not all from heart attacks. The biggest percentage of cardiovascular deaths are due to coronary disease, 42%, stroke, 17%, high blood pressure, 11%, and heart failure, 
nearly 10%. Heart attacks account for approximately 14% of all cardiovascular deaths. That is about 3% of all deaths in the USA. To compare, USA population has 21% deaths from cancer, 6% deaths from accidents, 4% from Alzheimer's disease, and, as some studies suggest, 9% due to medical errors. So fatal heart attacks are not as common as you might think. The bummer is that lowering LDL may actually increase the odds of dying from bigger causes like cancer or stroke. So don't automatically assume that lower is better. By crushing your LDL to the floor, instead of lowering your odds of dying prematurely, you may actually be increasing it. If you're still with me, here's the end of video bonus. Did you know that lipid lowering medication may actually contribute to arterial plaque? But that's in the next video. Subscribe not to miss a thing.